بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. A couple of months ago I have made a video about exam GPT and today I'm happy to make another video to show just some of the evolution of progress of how we can leverage AI to improve the assessment process and also the um, teaching and learning process in uh, universities or in schools or uh, in any uh, teaching institution. So exam GPT started since the release of chat GPT. I tried to make something that helps instructors to automate the grading, but now it goes even beyond this uh, with integrating with, uh, in addition to AI powered grading, we have cheating free assessment with AI based proctoring. So I'm going to show these features. We can also leverage AI to help uh, speeding up the creation of uh, well-crafted exams based on the content that uh, we teach to the students. And even uh, a bigger initiative that I'm starting to work is to transform education with generative AI. As you already know, generative AI now is invasive in all kinds of domains. And people talk about AI in general, generative AI in particular, uh, in education and also in other sectors, because it has a lot of potential to streamline many of the processes that uh, students or faculty members or university administrators are uh, facing challenge with. So let me just go to the new version of uh, exam GPT. I'm going to show you um, its capabilities. So once you have an account, so I'm going to log in with an account of, in, uh, of an instructor. Of course, you have two types of accounts. You have an instructor account and you have also uh, a student account. So now we can see now I'm logging in as an instructor. So it supports different languages like English. Also, it supports Arabic and uh, French as well. Uh, we can manage the users, but now let me go straight forward to the main functionalities. I'm going to add an exam. And the exam, so if you export an exam, it can be exported as JSON format, so you can share it with other instructors. They can import the exam as JSON, or uh, we can create an exam just from scratch. For example, let me make introduction to, um, I don't know, programming, for example. Okay, and I can make a course, for example, CS101, and for example, uh, let's say Python program. So we can do the exam manually. Of course, there is the start date. You can specify when the exam will be open, when the exam, uh, that's the classical part. And here we have the exam duration total grade. So the exam duration is going to be automatically updated as you add more exams. And you can write a general problem statement as a context for the whole exam, and then you can specify your questions. Of course, in the previous version, I have shown that we can here bring questions, so I can write question manually. But we have added uh, an excellent feature is to let AI craft questions or improve the question quality. For example, I would like to make um, an exam on Python. Okay, I can say I want to make a question on Python to assess uh, students understanding on num pi array so here i'm providing the context for the question uh, num pi array for example with uh, let's say mat plot and now i can use ai to craft the question for me and there are different type of questions i can do for example multiple choice question true false essay question short answer i can do also coding questions critical thinking so we can choose, for example, let me, for example, try to make critical thinking questions. You can specify the difficulty level. You can specify, okay, I want this for three minutes and a grade of one. And they can choose the AI model to generate. So here we support different models like GPT-40 or even Claude, you know, there are maybe 20 models uh, supported. So I can come here and make just generate. And based on the context they provided and the name of the course as well is going to take this into consideration. So I can have here a conceptual question, critical thinking question, okay, as a form of uh, multiple choice and explain your reasoning because this is a critical thinking question. And here we can find the response, the question type, the difficulty level, and even the rubrics for the grading. For example, for grading this one on 1 point, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2. This will help the AI later on to grade the exam. And this is the estimated time. Now, if I change my mind, I don't want to have uh, critical thinking questions. I want to have an essay questions and difficulty level hard. That's also possible. 
Okay, so we can uh, choose to change the type of the question and pretty much simple. Now we have um, another question of type essay. Now let me check it and let me make this question as a coding question and I'm going to change, for example, using three point, Claude 3.7, they are good for coding. And that's it. So just a few seconds, we want to have something uh, impressive. And you can add as many questions as you want. Uh, just here, make add question. Okay, now this is a coding question. Write a Python function called analyze data. Uh, question is uh, about coding. This is the solution. Okay, and it's very accurate. I've been using this for now, maybe one year and a half. And even for the grading, it's also very accurate. Uh, so yeah, this is the part. We can add as many questions as we want. Now, let me show you something even more important or much better. Now, imagine that you have a lecture and you'd like to create review questions or an exam out of the lectures. You can use import from document. OK, I'm going to use one of my lectures here. Uh, let me just choose this. Uh, so I'm going to choose one of my lectures about sensors and sensing technology so I can import a PDF file or PowerPoint presentation or Word document or whatever I want. You can specify the number of questions. I want five questions, six questions, plus, minus. You can also specify the total exam grade and the total duration. Let me make it, for example, 20 minutes for uh, four questions. And here you can specify or let me make five questions. What are the type of questions that you want to have? For example, I want to have a coding question. Uh, multiple choice questions, critical thinking questions. You can specify hard and medium questions. You can also generate the exam or the questions in French, in Spanish, Arabic, English. You can specify, for example, here I want to have um, the questions well elaborated. Um, you can add any additional requirement that you want um, the AI to take care of. Okay. Uh, Questions must be uh, very related to the course content. That's optional because it already knows about this, but just to show you that you can add any additional uh, requirement. And then pressing generic questions, master of seconds, and you're going to have a proposal Okay, about generating questions. Of course, AI is here to assist, it's not to replace. So I put my brain to check the questions, check the answers, refine them. Maybe if I don't like some of the questions, I can improve. OK, look, it, it extracted the course title, the course code. All of this was extracted automatically from the PowerPoint presentation. It extracted also the exam title from the lecture. It now put 20 um, minutes for 10 points for the grading. And now this is the first question is multiple choice because I requested to make a multiple choice questions, the proposed grading and the rubrics for the grading and the estimated time. Of course, the estimated times will be summing up to the 20 minutes, which is our requirement. OK, so as an instructor, you need to check, go through the different questions. OK, so this is a coding question and this is a critical thinking question. And if you want to change one of the question type, you know, very simple. For example, I want to change this one to something different. I didn't like it. For example, a matching question. That's possible. OK, and, you know, just pressing generate. And you will have a different type of question. You can change it manually if you want. So you have this option. So AI here is to help. But you can do the changes manually uh, based on the your requirement. OK, if I want to make it something different, for example, a true false question, that's also possible. And that's pretty much it. OK, now imagine that you are fine with the exam. We can just submit. And now we have the exam up and running. So now the next step is to add a student. I'm going to add myself as a, I have a student account with this one. So I'm going to add myself as a student. Of course, you can make just as many emails of the students as you have and then this email this will be shared with that student now i'm going to log out i'm going to log out and log in again with the student account and you will see i can find 
the exam. So now I'm logging as a student. So I can look at the exam and I can um, make the attempt for the exam. So I need to click on this and now it comes the AI based proctoring. Uh, so the exam here to prevent any kind of cheating. First of all, I cannot enter the exam only at the start date. So I need to wait a little bit of time until the start date. So when we are allowed to enter, these are the exam rules. So here the exam to prevent any kind of cheating is going to enforce a full screen mode. Okay. So here, when we go into the full screen mode, you cannot copy paste anything. You cannot copy from the exam. You cannot paste into the exam. You cannot get outside of the full screen mode because exiting the full screen mode will trigger a warning and the second attempt will result in auto submission. Also, you cannot go into the edge. For example, you cannot go to the right, to the left, because this, this also will going to trigger an auto submission if a virtual machine is detected. So, for example, can be uh, uh, put um, active or deactivated. This also will, re, uh, will trigger an auto submission. So, there are many countermeasures of cheating that were implemented to prevent uh, cheating cases, because any kind of cheating uh, detected this will result in auto submission and the student cannot uh, use the or enter the exam only with the validation of the instructor. Now we start the exam and these are the different requirements for to start the exam. I need to enter the full screen mode and start the exam. Now at this stage, look, there is a counter here and you cannot do anything. For example, if I want to copy this one, you know, you cannot right click is not possible. Now, if I want to make control C, that's also possible. Copying is not. If I want to paste something, it's not possible. So here we prevented any kind of copy pasting and uh, we can only write to, to the, the questions here. OK, so I can write, for example, the correct answer is I don't know. I'm going to put anything here and explain the concept of transduction. So we can write anything. Um, I do not know. Our transduction is the process of converting a physical phenomena into a digital an electrical signal. Okay. Of course, it must be more elaborated. And you know, if I put just empty here, look now, if I go to the edge, I want to know. Okay, moving the mouse to the edge is not allowed. If I go outside of the full screen mode, it's going to automatically submit the exam. I cannot do this. Okay, going again to the edge, to the left, to the right, you know, it gives me another chance. Now, if I do this multiple times, okay, let me do it another time. And now it's auto submitted. Okay, now it's auto submitted. Um, the students cannot enter the exam only if I validate and now I will have a full report as an instructor about all the things that the students okay so now I'm back to the instructor account and we can I can come here and see view attempts and now I can see that there is a student that has submitted the exam and it spends only one minute 35 seconds and they can also have a report about all the activities that he did how much time spent in every answer to answer every questions. Okay, what is the speed of typing, you know, um, different information like the IP address, which um, operating system was used, suspicious activities. So there is an automatic uh, proctoring that will uh, monitor all the activity of the student. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Now I can grade, I can, so if I want to view the submission, it says the evaluation is pending, um, I can, for example, okay, just before doing the evaluation, uh, this is the exam with all the information that you have made. And now the instructor can actually export the exam as a PDF, include the answers, include the solutions, that's possible. Okay, now this is the exam as a PDF, you can also export as a JSON, so to share with other instructors, so we, we, we can import it actually. Now I can come here and make add exam import from JSON, downloads, and the whole exam is imported. This is just to show you how we can import an exam. Uh, 
So this is if you want to modify an exam, that's also possible. But after students have made submission, this is not possible because it's unfair to modify the questions after the students have submitted. So I can now grade the exam easily. I come here and can say confirm grading. Just send it to uh, the AI grader. And just a few seconds, this exam will be evaluated. So here it will assess all the submitted exams and send a notification email to the students to inform them about their grade and also it will make a thorough assessment. Just let me show you an example of a report that will be automatically generated by AI. It contains all the information um, for the students, personalized recommendation for the students to improve, to know what is its mistake. So here there are several advantages. First, uh, it will send immediate response to the student. Second, it will provide a custom feedback to the student. So this is what the student is going to receive coming here. So the students will receive a full report uh, given the question, the grading rubric, and then the feedback from AI. Okay, so here I, I made just a random response. The response is incorrect. So it will explain why it is not correct and then we'll give you the grading. And then here, this is the recommendation to, for improvement. It will tell you, you need to review some particular topics. And this is the correct response. We'll do the same thing, okay, for others. So here I took only one out of two because I made a partial correct answer. I didn't provide all the details with respect to the requirement. Look, now there is an accurate definition of transduction. This is what I did. And identification of all components, I didn't do this. So the grade was only one out of two, of course, I will get zero on the other ones because I did not provide the response. So this is just to share the um, evolution of exam GPT. Um, it's something that really helps a lot to uh, improve the, uh, the grading process, provide custom feedback to the students and help the instructor to save time and focus more on how to improve the um, learning efficiency of the student. Thank you very much and if you have any feedback, I will be more than happy to listen from you.